Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. And today we have with us David Zabka from SDS2. He's here to talk about all things SDS2. What's coming up in SDS22 or 2022? What are some of the new features? Uh, some of the stuff that's gone in the past couple of years, the culture changes in SDS2, uh, what the uh, merger with Allplan has meant, and SDS2 2022. Is this the release where the force button works? The answer will not surprise you. All right, David, welcome to the Steel Forum. Great to have you here. Uh, for that, those of you who don't know, this is David Zabka. He's with SDS2. And what's your title there? Uh, so I've probably, uh, I've held a number of different titles here, actually. So um, started out in support, just front lines, taking phone calls, emails, all that good stuff. So a lot of you probably know me from, from that side of things. Uh, I managed the depart that department, the support department, for I think just over two years, and then I've been in sales now for about five years. Uh, currently, I'm the Western Territory Manager for in sales here. So, uh, by Western, we we mean everything from Nebraska all the way to the West Coast. So it's quite the large area to cover. That is a pretty large. Does that mean you you have to travel a lot as a sales guy, or you? Yep. So yeah, quite a bit of traveling. Um, you know, like pre COVID, it, it's not that bad. Pre COVID, it was one to two times a month. Uh, be gone for three or four days at a time. So not terrible. Um, I kind of enjoy it. You know, I get to see, especially being on the in the in the west half of the the states. You know. There's a lot of places that I've gotten to travel for work that I would have never even thought that I would would go there for any other reason. So seen a lot of neat places because of it. So got some some perks to the job there. So there have been a lot of changes, and you you talked a, a little bit. I would never like be able to tell you who at SDS two is in charge of what job at any given time. Like I know people and I'm like, they're, they seem to be on the ascendancy, but there's, it's, uh, I, I, this is a little bit of a bad word, but I'm going to say it, it's, it, it feels a little incestuous. Like there's this, the constant switching of departments and everybody's responsible. It feels like a company and that's a good thing, right? A company that promotes within, it feels like it really rewards growth. What do you think it is about SDS2 that it, it feels like the people who have been there have been there for a really long time and they have kind of grown in the company? Yeah, and that's so I think that's a, a little bit of a product of the size of our company, right? So we're, we're not necessarily this gigantic, we're, we're not Autodesk, we're not, not Tremor, so we're not this huge corporation, right? We're 60, 65, 70 employees here. Most of us are in Nebraska, uh, so it's it's kind of like a, a large extended family to to a certain degree, right? I mean, it's we we, we even have some of those uh, family family debates and, and fights <laughs> from time to time, and it's like okay, well, a couple of days later, you you just move on from it because it's like, well, okay, yeah, that that, that was a fight with my my brother, or my cousin, or whatever that that's the feel to it anyway um and then yeah you're right it's it's we do typically look to kind of promote from within if, if somebody's doing well and we we feel they would be good at a, another position that we need we we tend to look from from within a lot um not that we don't don't look outside because we we do that as well but uh, it's, it's nice you know i'm i'm kind of a, a good example of that where i went from support to managing the department and now into sales, you know, I, I've, I've done a pretty good job every position that I've been in and, and I uh, have been lucky enough to be rewarded because of that. So from that That's, standpoint, it's great. It's, it's an anomaly in this like current state of the world. Like, you know, 
my younger family, if when we're talking about careers, and said, you, you've got to be prepared to to move yeah. like this, right? Like you don't companies don't promote from within anymore, and that's that's kind of a big deal. Do you see like yeah. has has the corporate feeling at SDS two changed through some of the transitions with with Nemechek and now All Plan? How did that kind of all go? Sure, yeah. There's uh, there's a little bit, you know, a lot of it's uh, just kind of back office procedural type of stuff you know there's when we were privately owned it was a lot looser with reporting and and how we spent money you know when when i traveled there wasn't really great procedures on on all the reporting stuff and expenses and all this and that and so it's just just tighter procedural type stuff that we have to to follow and rules that we have to abide by so Nothing typically that would be, you know, forward facing to the customer. It, it's mostly just internal type type practices. So, um, yeah, I, that's the biggest thing. Other than that, you know, we we've mostly operated kind of the same way we had had in the past. So, so one of the the I, I asked our guys, uh, you know, what's the the thing that we should ask Dave, right? Like, what should we talk about? Sure. And the, the, the question I got, there, there were two of them, two sharp ones. I'm going to start with the first one. What do we have to do to get a new phone system in SDS2 headquarters? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hopefully. So um, you and I talked uh, before we started recording here, right? So it looks like I'm in a closet because I, I basically am in a closet. So um, you know, a lot of a lot of people knew where our headquarters were at in the past. A lot of people have been there for for probably training. basic training or advanced training or, or whatever it may have been. Um, so that's one of the things that changed with the Nemechek uh, acquisition was we no longer, as a company, owned that building we were leasing it, and that lease was up. We're looking for kind of um, you know more cost efficient office space and kind of a lot of different factors came into play there, but, uh, the, the COVID um, it had to impact your thinking a little bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that, that changed things. And so now we're actually kind of in a, this temporary space. We're in like a, a walkout, basement almost it's it's and nice that, that really puts you in a good mindset to understand detailers though like by being uh, in the basement it gives you empathy for the yeah. world that that so many of us live i it actually caused in my marriage it caused stress in our marriage because um, my, yeah my wife was like you're down in the basement like because this was when we were building the company you're down in the basement all the time i never see you it feels like you're hiding from me and so when we moved to this house, she said, nope, your, your office is going to be upstairs. It's not going to be walled off. You're going to, you, you got to be a part of the family. And it's sure. but open, con open concept is, is what they refer to that as. Right. So, so now you can't, can't hide from anybody. Everybody knows what you're doing. So, so to answer your question, I'm hoping maybe with the, uh, maybe with the move to that new building, you know, it's going to be new technology, everything will be, be new in there. So hopefully that allows us to, to make some upgrades. Yeah, uh, it's, no it's, promises. Cause that's like outside of my realm and, and right. I don't really care to be involved in that much. I got enough on my plate trying to, trying to do other things that I don't need another thing, but uh, I, I certainly always pass along the information that I get from customers. Yeah. It was weird. At, at some point they went from the model of, all right, hold on the next person will pick up to mm -hmm. we'll call you back which it might take the same amount of time but it feels worse and yeah it's so it, that it, was uh some of that that had to do with covid a little bit also uh our the phone system we had was definitely not equipped for covid and having all of our support reps work from home um, so I think they kind of scrambled and, and piecemealed something together kind of as a temporary deal. But yeah. Like and honestly, at this point, it, maybe it's because of the phone system or maybe it's because of the inherent nature of my generation. It's all about the chat, right? And your chat sure, function yeah. has improved a lot 
that's a great thing. I have some complaints about the website. In, in There was a decision at some point to take all of the old versions off the website and make you ask right. for them. That, that drives me crazy, but whatever. There's bigger fish to fry in the world. So you guys merged with Allplan, right? Right. Allplan does concrete. I got to watch a little bit of what they do at the, mm-hmm. at the conference summit. Summit. Yep. Yeah. How does that affect SDS2 going forward? What are they bringing to you? What are you bringing to them? Sure. Outside, outside come of some of that corporate speak, what, what are the, the tangibles that you think you're going to get out of that? Sure. So um, today it doesn't, like right now, nothing's changed again, other than we're, we're looking for internal procedural type changes and yeah, you're you're correct. Uh, I don't know a ton about all plan myself. Um, I'm learning a little bit more as we go here. But but you're correct about the concrete. They're they're very strong in concrete. Very strong in rebar. Uh, they have an, they have architectural sides. So I always look and and kind of compare them. If if you wanted to compare them to another product out there that everybody would be familiar, it's it's Revit, right? That that would probably be kind of their main competitor here in the US. Uh, when it comes to the rebar stuff, like it, it's from what I've seen, what I know, uh, nobody can, they're, they're way above everybody else in, in the rebar area. So uh, where, it, it's still early yet as far as what that means for everybody because there's technology that they have that we could use. We have technology that, that they could use. And it's like, okay, there's so much technical jargon and, and speak that goes into figuring out what what works and what doesn't and what's going to be feasible to do. And, you know, like we, we, we could put our technology in their software, but is the time frame that it takes worth it? And is, is the return worth it? And all that good stuff. So honestly, I know about as much as, as you know, at this point. So, but, and, and just to clarify, like a lot of that stuff is probably just, I shouldn't probably should not wear my SDS two thing and just clarify, like, some of this is just my own personal. Yeah. All right. So now you work in sales. Okay. What is the the thing that you go, right? You walk into the office and you say, all right, here's, this is why you need our product, right? This is the best thing. What is that today? Is it still connection design? Cause it's been, for the last 20 years, it's been connection design. I mean, that, that, that's still the number one, that's still the number one separator, right? I mean, there, there's more than just that, but that's the number one thing. Um, you know, I know, I know stairs and rails is a big thing. So from a sales standpoint, a lot of the large companies that do just straight structural, they're already on a 3D platform, right? So We are, a lot of our sales are going into smaller fabricators that have, you know, one detailer still doing AutoCAD and that, or it's a, it's a single detailer out of his house that's been doing, doing uh, the detailing for one fabricator for the last 20 years in AutoCAD and the fabricator decided they needed a Python machine or something. Right. Well, yeah. AutoCAD doesn't provide that. So they're, they're, they're perfectly fine and they're perfectly happy still doing it in AutoCAD, but they can't provide the uh, DSTV files to run the equipment that the, the fabrication shop is spending a lot of money on. The so, market has to be shrinking, though, right? Like it, yeah. has, to, it I, has to be. I don't know how you can, can compete. I right? I have been thinking the same thing for a long time, but it's just like, they, they just keep coming. They just coming out of the woodwork. And, and um, so with COVID and the way that things happen with all the distribution centers and things like that. So all the, all the bigger fabricators are just swamped with that type of work, right? Well, that has kind of opened the door for some smaller fabricators to, 
to maybe take on work that they hadn't in the past, or there's some kind of smaller startups and, and different things like that. So as the market kind of goes up and down, you know, like back in 09, a lot of shops just closed doors. Well, the way the market is now, it's open, it's letting a lot of new doors open. So um, it's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Like, yeah. yeah. Those, those distribution centers have been, uh, I would say a, a bane on our market. It's, if you're in it, great. You can, you can write blank checks all day long, but if, if you're not, it's very hard to get material and it, it you know, it, it costs some problems. Now it, that just means you got to be a little bit more creative, get out there and come up with solutions, start substituting beams and stuff. So there, there's opportunities for detailers to make money, but you gotta, you gotta go look at them. I think has some of that has some of that kind of relaxed a little bit from from what you're seeing, or is, is it, uh, the the, the joist shortage is is no longer the top issue in the country anymore. That was for for about three months. It was all we ever heard about was I can't get joists, and I don't know what I don't know if either the engineers adapted to it and they they took joists out of their packages, or if the joist availability has increased. Um, you know, I haven't really asked my fabricating companies about that, but I, I've noticed now that they're not asking for those joists to be substituted out anymore. Um, well, it, so ho- hopefully that's a sign and the, the good sign of, of things kind of breaking a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a very weird, weird, weird year and for for the us as a company and we're not sure if it's representative of the market or if it's just us but it's been very very steady as opposed to we used to get huge like you know you've got three weeks to get all of this work done and then there's nothing um and we felt much more like it's like every every time it's like okay we're about ready for more work a little bit more work comes in so it, it's been different but okay since yes. you know the, the kind of middle of the the pandemic, I would say. So what, what do you like? What's your, what are you sitting at now? What's your workload? Now? It's it, we're, I would say we've got kind of a three week and we kind of limit it to that. We've got three weeks of, of work out that we can do now. Uh, and, and we kind of stick that way because one of the things that customer, our customers value the most is they've got a GC. They want to start a project. They can't wait four weeks to start They need to be able to start those anchor bolts and some, you know, a lot of detailing firms, they'll book up that work and it's great, right? But it's not great for the customers because then they can't start a job for weeks and weeks and weeks. When we get a new job, we're like, all right, let's get anchor bolts out within, you know, two, three days. Let's get that done and get the, you know, get the GCs off their back. Um, So it's. We, we seem to be doing, we expanded a lot this year. We, 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 we've grown yeah. to 10, 10 employees. Um, and I didn't realize that, you were up to 10, 10 now. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought you were hovering around like uh, the six area, but 10, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. There's, it, it, it seems like every couple of months. And the cool thing is it's honestly, it's, it's, it's the remote workforce mentality. A lot of people got tired of it. They don't want to work in that office anymore. And I, I think our, our company is very employee forward. Like we, we genuinely believe that you should, you don't necessarily have to love your work and it doesn't have to be a passion, but you should be no less happy at the end of your work day than you came in at that morning. And, you know, we don't own you. We don't treat our employees like that. I, I think that's going to be the kind of the, the wave of the future is just people want to be content and their yeah. jobs and to be treated well. And it's, it's, it's I would agree. I would agree with that. So like how much, uh, how do you, how do you manage that and how much flexibility do you give those guys? I mean, I, I realize, yeah, you've got, you've got deadlines and, and things to meet as, as a detailer. We have, we have quite a bit of flexibility. Uh, you know, we've got, so our guidelines are right. We work from, a, we're, you know, pretty classic nine to five, um, but you know, if you want to work an hour either side of it or even two hours, we generally expect you to be here during the day. If you have a reason not to be and you need to work late that night, we don't care. 
that's fine, right? But generally, we need you here at this time so we can communicate back and forth. Yeah. Um, the big thing that we do different is you get a paid holiday every single week. Fridays are off. Um, so, and it's every not Fridays, every Friday, ev- is off? every Friday is a paid holiday. We, we work 32 hour weeks. Awesome. Uh, and we pay them for a 40 hour week. Okay. okay. Uh, and it's, it's, it's based on productivity, right? Because the, the, the science is there. And you can either choose to believe it or not, right? But you're getting 32 hours of productivity, regardless of how many hours after that you decide to work, sure. right? Like yeah. it's it's the same. You're just stretching it out longer, and you know employers will fool themselves into thinking, oh, that you know you can push yourself. Yep, you can push yourself for one, maybe two weeks, and get a little bit more. But you know there are detailers out there working 60 hours every single oh. week they're not getting 60 hours of work done, right? They're trying. It doesn't mean they're not trying, right? But that you just, you lose energy. Our guys come in on Monday and they're ready to go. Yeah. Right? And awesome. Yeah. And yeah, that, that isn't, uh, I mean, especially in the detailing world, that's not something that you, you really hear of. It's, I, I only know, de- I only know those detailers that are working 50, 60 hours a week minimum, you know, so. Well, and what, what tipped us to it in the first place, right, is Matt and I were doing that and we're pulling six and, and we, we're just exhausted. And we said to ourselves, you know what, let's next week, let's just, we're not going to do the overtime. Let's just do 40 hours next week. We, and we, we got the same amount of work done. Yeah. We're just like, you know, you can make yourself miserable for those extra hours. And let's say you work 8, 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. Right. Yeah. You could get that 14 hours of work in, but then you wake up the morning, the next morning, you start to work at 8 a.m. You don't have it. You yeah. make more, you make more mistakes, right? You're, you're a little sluggish. You're just dragging. And it's, but it, it's going to take a while for, for people to believe that information. And it, it is hard to believe. I mean, like it's been, but it's been just like ingrained and drilled in everybody for so long. That's just, you got to work yeah. a minimum of 40, it's a minimum of 40, no matter what. So yeah, yeah that would be a, a hard thing to be like a widespread change for people. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to take time. Uh, and you know, people will be like, well, you can't do it at this job and you can't do it at this. No, there, there's a lot of jobs that aren't productivity based like that, that you're using your brain. Sure. Right. Like if if your job, you know, a customer service rep, right, your wages are based on you being there to answer questions. That's not the case for us. Right. We need you to get stuff done. I don't care, you know, how long it takes you. I just need you to get it done. And for us, it's been transformed. And it, it, some of those employees that we've brought in. Right. Highly experienced guys. What's the number one problem in detailing? Right. Hiring and training right? We don't have that problem, right? Yeah. A detailer comes free and we get a hold of them and say, listen, this is the, the lifestyle you could live. You could be happier every single day of your life by yeah. working for us, yeah. right? Most, and, most detailers are pretty crabby. And I think it just all goes back to that you stress yeah. and long hours and then you're, you're crabby everywhere else. So. Yeah, it does. If, if, if you spent, you know, just a, a day or two in our morning meetings, where, you know, we basically set everybody to their task and check in and well, how's everybody doing? What what's it's a whole different feeling. Nobody's yeah, miserable, good. nobody's hanging, nobody's <sighs> and right, and, right. Yeah. Oh, that's can, good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I, and we I like uh so from I'm in a I'm in a you know, we have we have a lot of different roles here. So everybody's as far as SDS2, you know, like developers and, and support and general office staff and all that, like it, everybody kind of has different requirements of when they're going to have to be in the office and that. So from my standpoint, it's pretty amazing because I have a laptop. I also have a, a work space here in our office. So I can work from anywhere whenever I want. And then of course, um, everybody has my cell phone. So like I, I never get away from work and I'm, I'm taking calls, you know, driving home or in the evening, early morning, 
whenever. So, but I do like the the flexibility that that I have to be able to do that and kind of I can kind of come and go as I please. Uh, I have a good 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 manager here, great manager here. Um, everybody probably knows Doug Evans, so um, he trusts me to just get it done and and I very much appreciate that. Yeah, so. that that trust is just such a a big deal. Yeah. You know, managers who kind of look at people as, it, and it, it, it's, they kind of treat them as if like they own them, right? Like I need to suck all of the productivity <laughs> that I can out of you, right? Like I own you during these work times. You should yeah. be grateful to me to have this job, right? And I, I need you to show me that gratitude by being, you know, my slave. And it's like, you're, that's and, and it's told you, you could get street. away with it but but it's yeah. it, it's not gonna it, hold up it's a two-way street though like I, I i am uh you know very thankful to have the job that i have but at the same time i have a manager who's thankful that i'm here and and do a good job so it's a it's a mutual it's got to be a mutual respect thing yeah. in, in my opinion well, and that's the thing. Like, you know, if uh, we use Slack, if I if I post a message on Slack on a on a Friday, and say, hey, you know, one of our customers asked for this and they need it right away, can somebody jump in? I don't even have to, you know, say I need you to jump in. Somebody will volunteer. Somebody who's, you know, I'm just sitting around the house or you know doing some lawn work. I'll I'll come in and bang that out for you. And it's like you said, it's 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 mutual. It's yeah. It, it's it's how life should be, and I think post post COVID, it's how life's going to have to be if you want to retain good employees. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. It's, it's wow. a big deal. All yeah, right, so know. back back to SDS two specific because I, right. I I want everything that's in your brain. I want to suck it out, get all of that information. So I don't know if you, I, you don't say that because you'll get a lot of uh, residual crap coming out <laughs> that you don't want. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll never want to look in it again. <laughs> SDS2 2022. We've got, we, uh, I've been here since 6.318. That's, that's how far I go back, which is not nearly as far as some others. But is this going to be the version that the force button works? Is this, this <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a hard no. So it's a, so it, it's just a, it's an ever evolving thing, right? So there's still, even though it says force and like it's supposed to mean, hey, give me a connection, there's still programming that has to be done in the background to tell it like what to do in this situation when the force box is checked. So we always try to continually look at those situations where it's not working and, and expand the different situations where it does work, but um, it'll probably never be a hundred percent. I think it, it, there's probably other avenues. If I had so to guess, there, that wouldn't need is to Is there a depth to that that we as the users don't understand? Cause it seems like yeah. a simple thing, right? I, like it seems like, okay, if it passed connections, I would get a three row clip angle with three quarter bolts. I just want you to do that. Just pretend right. that it passed. Right. So it's uh, so it, it, it there is a lot more depth to it than that. Right. So like, well, there's there's I don't know how many different ways a connection could fail. Right. I mean, what what is there? A hundred thousands, probably more than I mean, it's probably Too in the many. tens of thousands of, of ways a connection could fail. So we have to account for like every single one of those situations and, and tell it what to do. Okay, when it fails in this situation, then you're going to go ahead and do this. Or when it's failed here, do this. So yeah, there is there is a lot more depth to it than the average user would understand. And I would say from, so in the position I'm in and, and the experience that I've had here, I've gotten the opportunity to work with development quite a bit and kind of kind of um, give my opinions and, and weigh in on things. And for a long, long time, I was kind of the same way that the average user was like, well, just it can't be that hard. Just tell it to if it doesn't do this, then do that. Like, that's not hard. Well, yeah, you, you come to find out there's there's so many more fingers connected to it 
than, than that. And uh, just being on the inside here, I kind of have a, a unique perspective um, of, of what that all entails. So yeah, it's typically never just a simple, quick fix. I mean, there are those times where it is, but majority of times it, it's not a simple, quick thing. And, it, and it's more complex than you could realize. So, so two of our, our favorite features locally, right, is the our, our parametrics, right? And then what for a while was components, right? We've banned components in our company because they have destroyed projects on us, right? Is that something that is is on a path to be worked on or are components dead? Um, no. So what, I, I guess I don't know the specifics. So we'd have to talk like deep specifics, sure. I'm sure, for figuring out why, why you may have had problems with the components. But components are not dead uh, at all. So in fact... What we do now with a lot of components is we just host them on our website under the SDS2 tool. The toolbox, right? yeah. So, so the idea there, the reason we started that was because there would always be, you know, we'd always release these components and, and somebody might request a, a new, little new enhancement with that component or maybe it wasn't working quite right. Well, you had to wait for an entire new release of SDS2 in order to, to get that enhancement or that bug fix. Well, now what we do, we just throw up, we just throw up the new version of the component on the website and you can go download it. So now they're not dependent on us making an entirely new release. We can get those out to you a lot faster. So our components and, and we can do new ones whenever then, right? So like next month we could. Right. So how does that work? That's what I was getting. Like, is there a separate team that all they do is components? Is it kind of an on-demand, oh, we kind of want this thing? How, how do we get a new component developed? Yep. So um, actually, I'm kind of on uh, part of the team that tries to uh, come up with the new ideas and, and prioritize what components we should do in that. So I'd be happy to... to take requests or, or whatever and pass it along to the team that, that does that. So those kind of new features, right? Like that here's this component. How does that work out in your, like you've got a large customer base and then you've got a, a base of potential new customers. When you guys strategically are looking at, you know, development, where does that balance kind of fall? Is it, is it more towards we need to continue to grow the, the, the sales to new customers who have never used SDS2? Or is it we have these customers, we need to make these ones profitable and want to buy more copies of SDS2? Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's certainly always that debate internally of how, how to prioritize things that need to be done because you're, you're right. It's, we have to keep our current client base satisfied. We have to make sure they're profitable and, and happy, but we also have to make sure that we can gain new clients and that. So um, it, it's always a debate. It's a never ending debate on that. Um, but there is a lot of overlap too. So one of the things that comes to mind when, I say the overlap is uh, we developed a sheer a welded stud component, right? So, so before that, I had current customers would always call me and tell like, David, I, I, I'm having to place each individual stud on this, you know, so it's for, for wood going over top. So your, your wood, I'm sure you probably dealt with that mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, but it was just a giant nightmare because you'd have to copy. Well, then if you get a revision come along now, all your studs are, are screwed up again and that. And that was a big sticking point it, on the West where, where I deal with in, in Colorado and in Washington, California. Everybody wants that wood look, but you can't do the structures they want without steel framing. So it, it was always a big deal out there. So um, that was a area where there's big overlap, like, hey, I can satisfy current customers. This will also help me sell the product a little easier also. So. 
So a lot of people haven't started using 2021. We had a discussion a little bit about why that is. Um, and then 2022, in these two versions, right? Uh, 2022, I assume, is the plan still for that to come out in January? Like, are you still sticking on the release schedule that kind of Stuart put out It'll there? be, so uh, still refining that. It'll probably be, it'll be first quarter. First about quarter. that. So... I, I would I would not expect to see it in January, but but first quarter, yeah. So we just kind of had to refine the process a little bit more. Um, I mean, yeah, like you said, it, it was. Uh, we've done a lot of internal changes as far as the processes of development and how that's done and, and schedules and all that. So still kind of refining that a little bit. All right. So with your sales hat on, okay. What what are the killer apps 2022, 2021? What are the things that you're like, I'm really excited. I'm going to take this to the customers. Be like, here's here's the stuff. Here's the new stuff. Right. Here's, the sh- here's the shiny stuff. So from a sales standpoint, um, there there's a couple things. So the number one thing that I'm most looking forward to, and, and I think a lot of our users will look forward to is an entirely new licensing system that doesn't require a HASP and doesn't require us to send you license files all the time when you need an update or whatever. It's just, it's login based, pings our server and checks out the license. So um, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to the channel for just a minute here. Listen, if you are still using a HASP, stop it. (laughs) HASPs are bad. They actively slow down your software. Get rid of your, go haspless right now. Go do it right now. You'll get less crashes. Your software will be faster and more reliable. Why would you not go get rid of your hasps right now? You so, j- Just so because you have be- that hasp does not give you any more ownership over your software than it does having the server be over, just get rid of it. You don't, the hasp is not a thing. You don't own anything because of that hasp. It's, you're still completely dependent on them sending you a license file. Get rid of it. It's done. <laughs> Sorry. That's. I'm glad you feel that way. I, I, appreci- I appreciate the backup in, in this conversation because, so there's no more, like there won't even be a license manager anymore. You want you don't have to, how many times in the past did you go stop a license manager, start it? Like all, it's gone. So I got to ask that. Does that mean you're working towards containerizing SDS2 for online porting? Or you have no idea what I'm talking about? Um, we're probably not going that far. Okay. With, like we're probably not going to the extent that, that you're thinking of. So this is really just, your, your license will just be hosted on a server up in the cloud somewhere. Like Bluebeam. Just like Bluebeam. Yeah, right? exactly. You, you register it, it poof, you're you're done. It's not something you have to look at. Sure, every once in a while you got to connect to the internet, but it's not like, you know. Yeah, right? and there's, so there will be like a borrow feature too. If, you, if you're going on vacation, whatever, yes. you know, you, you can borrow that license when you know you're not going to gonna have internet for a little while or whatever. So... We've considered those cases also and, and have a solution for that. So one of the big things that we have that we run into, right, is we've got nine licenses attached to five different license files and, you know, okay, I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to use it over here. How does that work? Especially if, like, we have employees that came with their own license, sure, right? And we want to put that in the pool, but they still want to have that like confidence that if I quit, I can go in detail on my own. I've got this license. So it's just, it's just login based now. So what you'll, what you'll have to do is all, all your license stuff, like from our database and everything that we, we have now, it'll all be migrated. It's in the process of being migrated to a different server and you'll create a login and that login's tied to your license. And when you log in, it pings the server to figure out what license it has and that's it. So when they go, if, if you have a employee that leaves, it's easier. 
it's actually easier than that. They don't have to take a HASP. They don't have to worry about a HASP or license file or this and that. They just, they go to their new place of employment or their new computer or whatever. They log in and done. That's awesome. That's, yeah. that's, 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 it's cool. really it, like, it's so super slick. I, I'm on it right now. So I get, I've, I've had the, you know, we've made a, a early beta release and I'm on it and it's, it's amazing. What about that back end, right? Like we, we had discussions with Steph about the, the, the database back end of it, right? These million little files, which through our experimentation is one of the biggest bottlenecks of SDS2 is that constant read write with these million little files. Uh, there has been some experimentation, I know with different database systems, is that development still on a, a, a forward path? I can't answer that question. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. So I can't okay. speculate. Right. So, so licensing is a good sales point for existing customers, right? Like that's, that uh, keeps me in it, right? Well, what? so it, it, it is from a, uh, it's from a, from a sales standpoint, it is also because, really? um, you know, we have companies that want to host a license on a server in Kansas and so that, their offices spread throughout the country can ping that one server they have and can get a license. Well, now they don't even, they're not even having to host that license. We do it for them and the, the offices can grab it wherever they're at. It doesn't matter where their office is at. It just pings our server and away they go. So it's, it's a sales point for both new and existing. You know, and, and you can tell me to cut this part out. I'll be happy to. I don't know if it's something that you talk about publicly, right? But I feel like the biggest thing that SDS2 doesn't advertise, right, that I tell all new detailers when I meet them, like people who are, are ready to go off on their own, is that SDS2, in, in I, I guess the sense of the word, will hold the note on your new license of SDS2, right? They will finance that for you so that you pay that over time. And... I, I, I don't know why they don't talk about that, right? But it's never been a problem. Sure. Um, like, I have detailers constantly coming to me. They're like, man, I, I want to go off on my own. But, man, I can't drop $25,000, $30,000 on a license of SDS2. And I'm like, you don't have to, right? Like, yes, you've got to spend that money. But they will, you know, if, if you put them on a, a, a pretty reasonable payment plan that you can make that back faster than you're paying for it yeah uh so you're you're correct um we're we're probably like with the nemechek uh acquisition a few years ago we're probably a little more strict we we still do that we're probably a little more strict with it so like in the past when we were privately held you you were probably able to get like a, a super long-term payment plan six, six months or a year or whatever. We, we can't do that long anymore, but yeah, we stretch it out over um, three, four months typically. So, and a lot of, I, I have uh, potential customers that they'll, they'll get a 30 day trial and they make the money off of the trial period before they ever have a, a payment that's due and then they pay it off of the trial. So right. um, Every, yeah, we're, we're very, we're very, flexible and there's subscription too. So that's what a lot of the guys that go off on their own, they don't, they don't have the capital and they don't want to, they don't want to make the huge investment so they can go a subscription route just for, for the But doesn't subscription life. require that chunk up front? Like if you're, if it, it was last, I knew 6,800 a year. Is that still? Uh, it's a little more than that. But yeah. a little, okay. So somewhere in that range, right. And it was, all right, write us a check and we'll get you your license. Yeah, we, 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 we get a little grace there also. So, and so the benefit with the, the subscription is just, well, number one, it's not that huge chunk of change. You can write that expense off every year. Whereas with a perpetual license, you know, you can only write that off the year that you purchased it. Maintenance is oh, but eligible for the, the write off, whatever it is. You could depreciate it over a couple of years. Our CPA well, has us all hooked up. We I, know. I, you, I'm not going to give too much more tax advice on it. He's going to try to hold me to it, and I'm no CPA. So. That's, that's fair enough. So you're. You got a guy like me, right? Like love, love SDS too. 
the the 2022 we talked about the licensing what are, what's some of the oohs and ahs stuff that i can look for to is there oohs and ahs because it doesn't have to be uh, i i will i will tell you there is not a ton there's a lot of back end work going on so there's some little things here and there the the licensing is a huge deal um, there's some small things with the user interface, but we're drawing editors getting some attention finally, isn't it? That was not I, convincing. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 like specific new enhancements and features. I'm, I'm not sure that there are any, I'm trying to think off the top of my head too. Like I, I don't, I don't know everything. Um, and I'm kind of going off the top of my head here, but I'm, I'm not sure there's a lot of like new, new features in, um, drawing editor but other than the, 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 yeah the, the ui is getting an update which is a a big deal yeah, so, of course it's a controversial deal yeah it, it is and um I, i'm like here to tell you the technology we were using was long overdue to be replaced and we're so a lot of the work in 2022 is is the underlying stuff that isn't necessarily visible to the user still kind of transitioning over to the newer UI type technology. And um, there's some small things with it that you're going to see, but not a ton. Uh, we will see a dark mode, which I really like. Uh, Love dark modes. Really good, good eye, eye strain. Like every, for me, every program that has a dark mode, I run in dark mode because it's just like the eye strain and everything for me. Uh, makes a big difference with, with that. So I'll run it in dark mode I, I, just for that reason alone. So um, I guess if you're only working 32 hours, it's not as big a deal. <laughs> uh, eight hours a day is still a lot of time to be staring at, you know, a, a light bulb, which is essentially... It is. It is. Uh, I mean, it's it's not the days where, like, you would turn on the, the Sony Trinitron and you would you know, and you can feel the radiation just pouring through your skull. But it's it's still you you stare at it too long, and it'll it'll do a little bit of uh, damage to your soul. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, trying to think of what else there is. So, there's like some connection stuff. I think they made some enhancements to end plate connections to be able to extend those uh, past your your beam flanges with some stiffeners. Uh, we were talking about the distribution centers and stuff. Uh, Volcraft has that flush frame joist connection. Mm -hmm. In 21, we added a shear plate for that. We added a clip angle. Um, it's it's uh, just a single clip for that. So there was a lot of the projects were using the single clip versus a, a shear plate. So we added that in there. Um, let me look at my notebook to see if I'm missing it. Well, like I, I said, yeah, this short message. The, the, <laughs> the licensing stuff is is a big deal. Like you're going to gain productivity from the licensing stuff by not. Oh, you don't have to convince me. Uh, we switched like your to license tap -less, like and all that stuff. Your, your productivity just went up because of that. So yeah. people will think I'm crazy for saying that, but I'm I'm really not. I mean, I'm crazy mm. not for that statement. It is. Um, oh, hey, there's some uh, handrail enhancements. I kind of forgot about that. So handrail stuff is always popular. What are we talking about? Because a lot of our work is is Miss Metals, like a lot. Yep. Of and that's so we talked about sales and that. Uh, that's a lot of our, our new sales is all a lot of uh, Miss Metals and stuff. So um, I know they've worked on the picket spacing I know they've uh, improved some of the vent hole stuff. Um, I think they're working on some better. Did uh, they fix ways. the mid rail thing where it's on the slope versus where it levels off I know, yet? I know it's on the list of things to be done. I don't know where it's at on the list or if progress has been made on it. So. Um, I know, so there's like, yeah, po the, your post placement at that can always be, there, there's always different ways of doing that. And I know that's one of the areas of discussion, um, posts at the corner, on, on the corner post. Um, I know they work doing some work on that to get that in there. One of the uh, things we work a lot with our staff on, right, is... sure 
detailers tend to get really stuck to what's shown on the architectural print, right? They're like, well, this is what the architect showed. I want to do it exactly like that. And they'll really try to force SDS2 into doing what the architect showed. And I'm like, listen, the architect just drew a picture, right? You got to follow that as the guideline, but generally you've got a little bit of leeway. So if, if moving that post six inches or to the rock fixes it and makes SDS2 do it automatically, do that, right? Don't take yeah. that graphical in, until the architect absolutely forces you to, right? Like use the software, man. Make, take that automation and, and, and uh, use it. That's always been my big uh, thing. Like what well, you're, you're right. So the architect, that, that's a general guideline at best that they typically give, right? But, and that's always been my big thing with SDS2 and that I try to encourage people is like, why, why are you fighting this? Why don't, don't fight it. Just, let yeah. the automation do it. And I realize you can't always automate it. There's always cases that you, you have to do something outside of the realm of the automation. And I get that. So then you're resorting mm -hmm. to other stuff, but if it can be automated. Yeah. It's it the same thing. It. Connection it. design is the same thing, but like a classic example is moment connections at the top of a column. And you run that column up another inch and a half and Boom, nice clean connections work great. It's hidden under the deck. Nobody cares. We've done, you know, a, a, a thousand projects like that. Nobody's ever said, boo, works great, saves us hundreds of hours. Right. Yeah. Give it a, give it a try. Right. Like Wait, and you leave you leave it up an inch and a half. So a lot a lot of them will try to, to fidget around and lock it or whatever and, and drop it that back down. Yeah. You just leave it up an That's inch what we did for a while too. And then we just said, you know what? It, yeah. It's it's under the deck. Right. The bolts yeah. protrude an inch and a half anyways. Right. Yeah. Why am I doing all of this extra work? I could just put normal stiffeners in there. I don't got to try to get it to extend as a cap plate. And then yeah. there's these weird stiffeners, so, all of that. Mm -mm, nope. So what? You probably got like your pour stops just going to cope out around the column and you're your has to anyways. Be, your the deck's going to be and your deck's going to be cut. Or, cut uh, yeah. The moment plate extends the anyway, through so the, the heck, pour right? stop anyways, right? What that what I, I'm not saving anything, right? Yeah. And it, it's everything's delegated design anyways. So the, the the engineer of on the connection design works for me, right? <laughs> so. I want yeah. you to do it this way, to do, do it that way for us. And they do. And Hey, that's a great tip. You're just going to give away all your secrets here. Better be careful. That's, that's what we're all about. Give away the secrets. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I like about the industry and, and our user base in general is everybody's always, everybody's always happy to, to share information. And the best point of every conference that I go to is the round tables. You just get four or five guys who are passionate about their jobs talking yeah. about how they could do it better. I found this thing out and I, and, and you just, every once in a while, you see a guy at that table, just light up like, man, yeah. that is a brilliant idea. We should try that out. Let's do that. Right. And Oh, it's, it's huge, which is uh, honestly, that's why we started the channel in the first place. Right. Cause we would have our employees be like, oh, I, I'd never heard of that. That's a, that's great. Let's do that. I'll, we'll do that from the, the time on. Right. And, and we love we love to share that. The thing that frustrates me the most, right, is that we're constantly like, here's this tip, here's this tip, do this. We never hear back from anybody else about being like, oh, here's a tip that I know. Why didn't you do it this way instead? Never. It's like, man, send us a message. Tell us what you want. But, uh, I think it feels from the uh, software vendor standpoint. Oh, it's, 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 it's gotta be frustrating. It's gotta be. And you know, you, get, you guys get, you get crapped on for all oh, your, your, your interface is out of date by some people. I don't know who would say those. Yeah. I don't, I don't know who, uh, <laughs> uh, but then you, you, you update the interface and everybody's like, I want it the old way. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it this way for 50 years. Why you, would I change? You should see so I, I, I totally understand some of the gripes of the, the longtime users in that. Like, I, I totally get it. I think we've done, improved it um, enough to where they can continue working in their old ways with modes and, and different things like that, right? So we've tried to keep those around. But I don't know if you remember, like, your onboarding process and when you were learning SDS2, Ryan Vanek was, was my 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 trainer. 
Yeah, so that was well, and that would have been what 16, 18 years ago. Uh, yeah, ish. Yep. Yeah. So like I don't I don't know if you remember what it was like learning SDS2 after this, but oh, I I get to experience it not firsthand anymore, but I get to experience it by being in sales, you know, I new customers, so they're new users. I talk with them after they go through the training and that. And there always used to be this talk before the new user interface, there always used to be this talk of, of how onboarding and training takes so long. I'm not kidding you. A week in now, a new user is flying around that interface and doing everything that I can do right, after 15 it, years. And they're just as fast, if not faster than me. Right. It works intuitively now, right? It's counterintuitive to people who have been beaten into the SDS2 manner, the whole like left click, right click, left click, right click, mid click, <laughs> like that thing, right? Yes. It, it worked once you learned it, right? But if you put, if you took somebody off the street and said, here, right, put a column in, and that column is never getting put in, <laughs> right? Yep. And, and now a user will go in and say, okay, I want to modify this connection. I'm going to right click on it. Right. And that, that yeah. kind of works intuitively and yeah. you, you got a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. Right. There's oh, a sorry. whole lot of modernization that needs to go into that, that interface, but it's, it's tracking, right. Right. And that was so the, that's the, the great thing about software is it's never, ever, ever. That was the last thing I was going to, going to ask you about. Right. So 2019, right. That the version of 2019 gets released. And it just this 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 pall of doom, right? It felt like it, it sat over SDS two. Everything was going wrong, right? Like it just felt bad, and it's it felt ascendant since then, right? How, how has that experience been internally? Um. Well. <laughs> Did you guys feel the pall of doom or was that just our external thing? So I'm so internally I, I, I'll be fully transparent. Like I'm, I'm kind of loud. People can hear me. I, I pretty opinionated usually. So um, I, sometimes people are internally are kind of like, oh, God, David's coming to talk to me <laughs> or whatever. Um, it was, it was, tough it was so i remember when it i'm typically not involved in like when they make the releases and, and when it should go out and that but yeah when i saw 2019 go out i was pretty vocal about the way that i felt about it and um shortly after yeah we pulled it and it was the right move yeah uh we felt it uh, we heard from customers, you know, everything, but um, I think that that was Stu's kind of uh, very beginning of, of his reign, if you will. And uh, I very much uh, agreed with the way that he did things and said, hey, okay, look, yes, we're going to just take a lot of resources and make a, we're going to wait a year, make a release that's really good, really stable. And the team delivered on it. Um, they, they did a great job on that. And we've kind of continued doing some of those same things now the past couple of years that really, like you said, are, are kind of helping propel us. So uh, it's always productive. I like the way that things are done with the process that we use now. There's a lot more uh, transparency with the way development is, is being done and how it's going. So that gives us the opportunity to give a lot more feedback early on. Whereas in the past, it would be that feedback wasn't received until after it was done basically. And then, then it's kind of almost too late in a lot of cases. So um, yeah, things are, things are good. Things are great. Uh, I'm looking forward to 2022 if for nothing else other than you know, HASP and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, we've got to internally, um, uh, this is kind of off. Let's wrap up and then I'll, I'll talk to you about the other thing. So 
All right, so, Dave, we really appreciate you spending some time with us. Any closing words, any stuff that uh, you, you want to talk to the users, other you know, advice, recommendations, other than get rid of that stupid hat. Come on, move on. <laughs> uh, I just I just want to say thanks for having me. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I, and, you know, like anything else, I, I know we're not perfect. So uh, I'm always open to the feedback. Love to hear from, from anybody out there that wants to email me or call me or whatever at any time. Like, just feel free if you just need to let something out because you're mad. I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> if you're you heard it guys. here. If you don't like any feature of SDS2, let David know yeah. all about it. Uh, I can't guys, no promises, no promises, but uh, <laughs> I'll make sure to pass the information along. He'll me. he'll at least listen politely and pass the yeah. information on. So, all right, all right, guys, that's it for this episode of the Steel Forum. If you got questions, comments, leave them down below. If you got tips, please share your tips. Help your fellow users out. That's what we need you for. Leave them down in the comments there. Join the Discord for some of that more instantaneous help uh, when you need something that uh, maybe SDS2 can't get you as quickly as you need it. So we'll see you next time here. Let's do it.